Did you know that your fingernails can provide clues to your overall health? Abnormalities that occur on the nails may warrant a closer look. Let's look at white dots on the nails. Commonly called white nails or milk spots and is more frequently located on the fingernails compared to toenails, they often found in the central portion of the nail plate. The normal nail looks a kind of pink in colour. These white spots usually are not harmful, although in some other situations it can be an indication of an underlying disease. Bacterial or perhaps fungal infection on the nails can potentially cause this effect. This condition can also be found in people with arsenic poisoning, kidney failure or respiratory conditions. Contact with extreme cold could possibly result in this condition, but these spots will slowly vanish over time if that's the cause. Now let's look at cracked or split nails. Dry, brittle nails that frequently crack or split have been linked to thyroid disease. Cracking or splitting combined with a yellowish colour is more likely due to a fungal infection. Low levels of vitamin C, folic acid and certain proteins in the diet are also known to cause nail splitting. Now let's look at white nails. If the nails are mostly white with darker rims, this can indicate liver problems such as hepatitis. Nails yellowish in colour can indicate jaundice, which is another sign of liver trouble. Very pale nails can sometimes be a sign of other serious illnesses such as anemia, congestive heart failure, liver disease and malnutrition. Let's take a look at white dots now. If small white dots appear on the surface of the nail that won't budge when you try to buff them off, this is usually due to some type of trauma, such as a banged finger. In time they should grow out and fade, but if they don't go away it could be a sign of milk spots, as discussed earlier, so you may need to see a dermatologist. Now let's take a look at bluish nails. The medical term for blue fingernails is cyanosis and can be a sign of various disorders so it should be checked out. Whilst very cold temperatures can temporarily slow the flow of blood through the skin leading to a bluish colour, this should go away once you warm up. It can also be a sign of Raynaud's disease. Let's move on to yellow nail syndrome. With yellow nail syndrome, nails thicken and new growth slows. This results in a yellowish discoloration of the nails. One of the most common causes of yellow nails is a fungal infection. As the infection worsens, the nail bed may retract and nails may thicken, crumble and there's a lack of cuticle and this detaches from the nail bed in places. Less commonly, yellow nail syndrome can be a sign of respiratory disease such as chronic bronchitis. Yellow nail syndrome can also be related to swelling of the hands and in rare cases yellow nails can indicate a more serious condition such as a severe thyroid disease, lung disease, diabetes or psoriasis. Now let's move on to nail pitting. Small hole or ice pick like depressions in the nails are common in people who have psoriasis which is a common condition characterised by scaly patches on the skin. Nail pitting can also be related to connective tissue disorders such as alopecia and Reiter's syndrome. Now let's move on to green nails. Green nails are a result of a pseudominal infection which is usually caused by the environment. This means that those whose immune system is already low are very susceptible to this type of nail infection which makes the nail often appear green in colour. Now let's move on to nail ridges. These can either be horizontal or vertical. With vertical nail ridges, this can signify nutritional issues. Horizontal ridges in the nail are often associated with diabetes, liver disease or other chronic diseases. Now let's move on to dark lines beneath the nail. If you have dark skin, it's fairly common to have streaks of pigment, melanin down your fingernails. However, you should still get this checked out by your doctor as it may occasionally indicate a form of skin cancer called subungual melanoma, the most dangerous type of skin cancer. Generally, this only affects one nail causing the stripe to change in appearance and becoming wider or darker over time. The pigmentation may also affect the surrounding skin. Now let's move on to rippled nails. If the nail surface is rippled a lot like the pitting I've discussed earlier, this may also be an early sign of psoriasis or inflammatory arthritis. Discoloration of the nail is also common as the skin under the nail can seem reddish and brown. Now let's look at Bose lines. 
Those lines are indentations that run across the nails. This phenomenon was originally described in 1846 by a French physician known as Joseph Honor Simon Beau. The lines are caused by diseases that affect the entire body, including malnutrition, heart attack, liver disease, severe infections like mumps, measles, scarlet fever and pneumonia. And it's also caused by poorly controlled diabetes. Bose lines can result from any disease process or illness that is severe enough to affect the growth plate of the nail. Now let's move on to Terry's nails. This was named after Dr. Richard Terry and it's when the fingernails and toenails appear white with a characteristic ground glass appearance with no laluna or the white crescent shaped area of the fingernail. With a condition known as Terry's nails, most of the nails appear white, except for a narrow pink band at the tip. It is described as a brown arc near the end of the nails. Terry's nails can sometimes be attributed to ageing. In other cases, Terry's nails can be a sign of serious underlying condition, such as liver failure, cirrhosis, kidney failure, diabetes, heart failure, hypothyroidism, and malnutrition. Now let's move on to splinter hemorrhages with little brown streaks. These are thin dark lines underneath the fingernail that could be from tiny little vessels under the nails that are bleeding. These are known as splinter hemorrhages and are nothing to worry about as they are due to the nail being injured. However, if a few nails are affected, this may be a sign that one of the heart valves is infected, known as endocarditis. Splinter hemorrhages can also be associated with several other conditions, including lupus, psoriasis, and rheumatoid arthritis. Now let's move on to the most common nail condition, and that's chewing your nails. Chewing nails and biting your nails may be nothing more than an old habit, but in some cases it's a sign of persistent anxiety that could benefit from treatment. Nail biting or picking has also been linked to obsessive compulsive disorder and the habit is often a way to ease anxiety or to keep at least one part of the body occupied. Frustration and loneliness are also additional emotional triggers that can lead to nail biting. Whilst some research suggests genes may play a role, if you can't stop it it's worth discussing it with your doctor. Now let's move on to spoon shaped nails. Spoon nails are often soft nails that look scooped out. The depression usually is large enough to hold a drop of liquid. Often spoon nails are a sign of iron deficiency or a liver condition. Now let's move on to onycholiasis. With a condition known as onycholiasis, the fingernails become loose and can separate from the nail bed. The separated part of the nail becomes opaque with a white, yellow or green tinge. Sometimes detached from the nails, this is associated with an injury or infection, but in other cases nail separation is a reaction to a particular type of drug or consumer product, such as nail hardeners or adhesive. Also thyroid disease and psoriasis can also cause nail separation. Now let's move on to nail beading or vertical ridging. This appears as vertical beaded ridges resembling a candle's wax drippings. With nail beading the bead seems to drip down the nail like wax and it's associated with conditions like diabetes, thyroid disorders, Addison's disease, vitamin B deficiency, hormonal changes and stress. The other cause of ridging and beading can just simply be old age. Wrinkles of the nails can run from the bed of the nail to the tip and generally start on one or two nails. Over time the ridges can appear on the nails so gently file and buffing them can help to smooth them. Now let's move on to paronychia. Paronychia is the name for inflammation that causes a painful red and swollen nail fold on the skin and soft tissue that surrounds and supports the nail. Paronychia can be acute where it develops over a few hours or chronic where it lasts more than six weeks and is most often caused by infection, injury or irritation. Sometimes there's an underlying skin condition such as eczema or psoriasis or another medical condition such as diabetes or HIV and it's about three times more common in women than in men. Now let's look at nail clubbing. Clubbing of the fingertips can run in families and could be harmless. However, if it suddenly develops, it may be a sign of some kind of underlying medical condition and it could be due to low oxygen levels in the blood, resulting in various diseases such as lung or heart disease. The final condition I want to look at is onychorexis, which is known as brittle nails. 
it can affect the fingernail or toenail and may result from using excessive strong soap, water exposure, nail polish remover or if you suffer from hypothyroidism, anemia, anorexia nervosa or bulimia. It's believed to affect up to 20% of the population. The medical treatment for onychorexis generally depends on the underlying condition. The medical treatment for the condition normally involves some kind of hand cream that you can apply at home. And that's it. I hope you realise now how your nails can show exactly how healthy you are. And if you've enjoyed this video then please give it the thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and bye for now.